Welcome to The Learning Curve, the show that takes you inside the Onslow County School System and highlights what makes our school community unique. Every month, we showcase our students, our teachers, and our staff celebrating their talents and achievements. So join us now for The Learning Curve. We had an exciting day here at Somersill Elementary School where we had some kindergartners discussing uh, different types of animals uh, with Jacksonville Commons Elementary School through the Onslow View system. Uh, and they are all doing that to celebrate Digital Learning Day, which takes place today, not just at Somersill and Jacksonville Commons, and not just Onslow County, but uh, all across the nation. We had Digital Learning Day today. We connected with Jacksonville Commons Elementary School where each class had to choose an animal and then the other class had to ask questions to guess our animals that we had. Does your animal live in a rainforest? No. No. Does it fly? No. Does it fly? The game we was playing, we had to guess the animal. My question was, does your animal live in a rainforest? Welcome to our sixth annual All County Art Symposium. We're very fortunate this weekend to have 62 artists from our high schools here, uh, joined by many of our local community artists who are working with them to allow them to work with some art mediums that maybe they wouldn't have an opportunity to work with inside their classroom. We have Kelly Chen with us today and she is working on a session with our students introducing them and teaching them about Kimikomi art. Uh, she is a certified Japanese Kimikomi uh, artist and so she is working with those students to not only introduce that but to allow them to take part in that type of art form. We also have Steve Zawistowski behind me here, and Steve is uh, the owner and um, CEO of Stephen Z Metalworks, and he is here working with our students in creating a collaborative installation piece using sheet metal and various other materials. Hi, I'm here with Steve Zawistowski at the 2016 All County Honors Art at White Oak High School. Um, we're working on a collaborative piece with students from all of the Onslow County High Schools. Steve is a famous local metal artist. He's going to tell you about this collaborative project. Well, good morning. We are working on what we're calling the sky quilt. And every student gets a 4x8 piece of thin metal on which they draw a picture that we could then cut out with a plasma cutter. Plasma cutter allows the negative space to show and allows the pieces to be bent out according to how they design their piece and how they finish uh, finish making it. So then we're taking them all there and putting them together, hanging them in a quilt fashion, and we'll eventually cover this whole wall with about 70 panels, all different colors, all different designs, all made by separate people. Um, this is the oops portion of our workshop and what I mean by oops is these are members of the Onslow Outdoor Painters Society that have uh, come to uh, 
volunteer their time to work with the students. Um, the class is being led by OOPS members Karen Crenshaw, Jim Phillips, and Dean Remington, all of which are local artists. We paint outside in plein air, um, and we paint from life. This time of year, though, we don't really do that with these students. We bring them in here, and but we're still giving them observation skills by having them paint for life, from life. You see them that they're actually working on a still life behind me. And working from life and their painting, because a lot of times in class they don't get to paint as much, and this is a chance for them to work with some local artists and hone those observation and painting skills. It's a great weekend for all of our students. We're very happy to have our artists here. These folks have so graciously volunteered to give their time and talent to our students today. And we already are having a blast and making some great artwork. Clyderwin Elementary School today and our fourth graders are doing a wax museum which means that they have researched inventors from around the world and as the children from around the school come they press the button to turn them on. Hi my name is Rob Bear. I was born March 8, 1922 in Germany. They give information about the inventor's life and this was a culminating activity for one of our IB units called How the World Works. I pick, I pick Oliver Wright because I think he was cool because him and his brother uh, invented the plane. I learned that the brothers had a bike shop and they sold, they sold their bike for $18. My name is Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson. I was born August the 5th, 1946. Not only did I invent caller ID, but I also invented the Touchdown Telephone. I am Carl Benz, and I chose this person because he inspired me with the first car, and I want and I wanted to learn about how he made the first car and why he made it. I am Alexander Graham Bell. And I learned that Alexander Graham Bell invented the first telephone, and I think that that was good. I'm Ruth Wakefield, and I chose that person because she invented the chocolate chip cookie, and I love chocolate chip cookies. We chose the Wright brothers because we wanted to do um, someone that flew, and we liked airplanes. We are Hetty Lamar, and she invented spread spectrum technology and has six husbands. Hi, my name is Renity, and I am the inventor of book bags. I chose this person because I think that it was fun to get to know about book bags because I use book bags today for school and traveling, so I decided that I should do um, book bags. Dick Kelsey died on April 24th. That wasn't that long ago. I invented the first computer. Back in the day, they used to fill up a whole room, and I had actually had a partner to design it on paper, then I built it. My name is Thomas Edison. He had lots of, t he had one tattoo, and he was, he really wasn't the one that created the light bulb. He, he made the light bulb new and approved. The light bulb was invented to give people light in their houses instead of them having to put lots, lots of holes in their house to have for light. My name is Albert Einstein. I invented a refrigerator that did not require electricity, only a heat source.
We're here at the first ever Onzo County Schools High School Battle of the Books Tournament and we wrapped up a great day today. We had uh, five out of our seven high schools participating and each school had to read 12 books. And the nice thing about this is that the kids and the uh, coaches actually had to create their own questions for this competition. So every question that was read by our moderator uh, was created by those teams. And our moderator for today was Carrie Swift from Follett School Services. And Carrie, tell us what you do. Basically, I've been working with the district for about 14 years as one of your vendor partners, and we've developed library collections and worked on digital content for the classroom instruction. Uh, a lot of training, a lot of partnership, and working on the vision of, of educating students in your district. Perfect. Um, now, Carrie, this isn't your first time moderating with this. No, hardly it is not. Actually, uh, Onslow County started my path as a moderator um, a couple of days before a tournament about 10 or 11 years ago. Someone was ill, and I stepped in, had a rough couple of rounds, and caught my stride, and then, lo and behold, I was invited the next year and actually it has taken off throughout uh, my region and I'll be doing the state competition this year on May 6th. So it all was born here in Onslow County. You are welcome and we always adapt the way we do things here in Battle of the Books and we always make some changes to make things more efficient. Um, but how many around here do you have to do? It's not just Onslow and the state. You have how many other competitions? This year is 20. Last year was 26. Uh, this year there's a lot of competitions on the same date, so I wasn't able to be in more than one uh, place at the same time. So I was, I'm doing elementary, middle, regionals, and then the state for middle school. I know the media coordinators really enjoy having you, and the, the kids respond very well to you. So thank you very much for all of your workforce. And I have to say, Onslow is, is the most efficient and well-run. Um, the way the stage is set up, it, it puts the kids in the position to succeed. And I always enjoy coming here. You always have a nice, soft chair for me. We appreciate your help, Carrie. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, we're at Queens Creek Elementary and we are so happy to share a family fun night with our QCE families. In addition to having a book fair going on, we have wonderful parent programs from Number Lines with Miss Gail Cotton to um, Higher Order Thinking Reading with Carrie McLeod. This is a culminating event of our readathon for the last two weeks where we have raised $12,000 for a new playground and we are so excited to offer these family fun nights as well as the gift of reading to our students. Teachers don't do enough. Teachers get the whole summer off. They only work until three o'clock. Teachers are the single biggest obstacle in education today. The only way to foster excellence in education is by making the teachers know what their place is. If teachers really cared about children, they'd stop whining about their salaries. Anyone can teach. Those who can do and those who can't teach. We've all heard quotes like that at some point in time throughout our career. Currently, it seems like there's an ongoing war between the public education system here in North Carolina and, well, us teachers. Teachers have become the scapegoats for a multitude of problems throughout the entire state. Teacher morale is at an all-time low, while teacher turnover is at an all-time high. Each year, roughly 15% of teachers leave the teaching profession in North Carolina. Some of them pursue other careers, some of them teach in another state, and some of them just go into private education. Statistically, almost 40% of teachers will leave the classroom within the first five years. That's not just a problem. That's a crisis. 
As state superintendent, Dr. June Atkinson shared, if we wait until something is broken to fix it, there may not be anything left to fix. Teachers need to feel like they matter. Teachers need to feel like they make a difference. Teachers need to feel empowerment. And that's what I'm talking about today, teacher empowerment. Now, it starts with expanding our professional roles just in small little bits every single day to make our jobs more fulfilling, but also less difficult. And then teachers can take on longer, more school improvement-like tasks when we're ready to tackle them. Empowerment's basically investing in teachers with the right to participate in the determination of their school's goals and policies, and allowing teachers to exercise their professional judgment about what to teach and how to teach. Empowerment's independence. Empowerment's autonomy. So why do I feel empowered as a teacher? Well, I feel empowered for a couple different reasons. First off, I'm going to go with the idea of some of my graduated students. When they come back and say, hey, Mr. Maticola, you know what? The one big message they keep telling me is that my class taught them what they needed to succeed in college. And you know what? That's what you want to hear. It makes me feel great. It makes me feel empowered. And it makes me feel like what I'm doing matters for their future development. I feel empowered by my principals. I've had some great ones here in Onslow County. My principal, Chris Andre, she supports my actions and allows me to have autonomy within my classroom. My principals trust me to determine the best way that I can teach my students. I'm allowed to experiment in class. If I want to try a project or a new method of teaching, I have their full support. If I want to create a new club or an organization, I can and have. If I have a problem and need to talk, I know Mrs. Andre and my other principals are always there. I have their ear. Having the access to my principals, along with their support and trust, that makes all of the difference. Throughout the entire country, a lot of the times, teachers say the biggest problem they have is they don't feel supported by their principals. Well, I'll tell you what, having great principals makes my job as a teacher much, much better. Additionally, I feel empowered because I'm involved in the school system, just like you all are here today. Um, teachers need to be leading the profession. By doing that, it increases their worth. It increases their motivation. Personally, I mean, I'm on the Teacher Leadership Council, the High Squansboro High School Planning Team, Superintendent's Advisory Council. Basically, the point is, I'm empowered because I get involved in decisions. So that way, I feel like my opinion matters. It gives me the empowerment that I need. But that isn't all. I mean, we have great leaders on the county level that allow us to be empowered, too. We've got Dr. Eason over there. I mean, she has been a great resource to me all year long throughout this Teacher of the Year process. She has been absolutely 100% unwavering in her support and has just been an asset in my development, both personally and professionally. I mean, it seems like she touches just about every single thing that happens throughout this entire county. And I mean, she's just working all the time. And I could tell by some of the times the emails come in. Um, I mean, it's amazing leaders that we have on the county level that helps give us empowerment in our classrooms. They help us do what's right for our county. All right, so why is teacher empowerment such a big issue? Well, first off, not every teacher is outspoken. Not everyone's willing to stand up and challenge the authority in the county. Not everyone's willing to bring up an issue or rock the boat or do anything else like that. Not everyone believes their administrators back them up 100%. Not every teacher thinks they're an involved stakeholder, and I honestly don't know why. When you couple all that with the ongoing issues in education, the consistent degrading of teachers by the General Assembly, and just the overworked, burnt out feeling that you have, you start to see why so many people are leaving the profession. So let's address some of the issues. The biggest problem I see is time. There's just not enough of it. In addition to normal instructing of students, and you all know this, my time at school is taken up by covering duties, offering tutoring, attending meetings, getting copies made, checking messages, calling parents, entering grades, filling out paperwork, IEPs, PEPs, 504s, and then setting up my classroom. That means that other parts of my job, like grading papers, creating instructional materials for my two curriculums, writing the quizzes, writing the tests, emailing the parents, emailing counselors, and planning club meetings is pretty much done on my own time after school. Teachers have to work through lunch, they stay late, they take their work home on a regular basis. Currently, it's average, or sorry, the average estimate in the state of North Carolina is that a teacher works on school-related activities and curriculum for 56 hours a week. That's a lot. I mean, that's two full days more than the average 40-hour work week. Coaches, they're even more. I asked a couple of them in my department, how many hours each week do you guys spend doing school things? The average between the three of them, 73. 
That's crazy. Teachers need time. Teachers need time to develop their curriculum so we can take our students to the next level. Uh, I've been an advocate of a pretty drastic long-term change lately. Teachers need the option of an 11th month of work to develop all of our things. We need to develop ourselves professionally, implement new technology into our lesson plans, and learn and demonstrate our best practices with the other teachers throughout the state so we can create the best classrooms possible for our students. Teachers need to be given the opportunities to better themselves so in turn we can create better students. We have vast technological resources in this county that can enhance our education, but we never really get the time to properly learn how to implement them into our curriculums. We have great innovative coworkers in this county, but how often do we really get to sit in on their classes and learn from them? Teachers need an opportunity to learn from each other. By creating this 11th month of employment, well, it alleviates a couple issues. First, the time, we'll have time to get things done, but also that much needed pay for teachers. Now, speaking of teacher pay, don't get me wrong. I know teachers are grossly underpaid for what we do. You all know it. I'd love to advocate for an increased pay, but that's the General Assembly in Raleigh that does that. It's not something we can fix here today. But we can remember teacher pay in the upcoming months during those elections. Spread the word to everyone you know that through voting, that's the only way we can make a substantial change in our education system. It's time we got new blood into the legislature that actually will make the changes that they promised to make to enhance our ed educational system. Now on the county level, Onslow County has been doing a pretty darn good job here um, with our continued commitment to the supplemental teacher pay. Some other counties don't have it. And that makes a big difference for us. Um, I mean, it does a great job helping us to attract some teachers, retain our teachers by having that extra payment. I mean, it really is a difference maker compared to some of the other counties. Only change I would encourage, that's the idea that we should have the option to get our 10 month pay over 12 months through the county. For anyone going almost 90 days between paychecks, that's kind of difficult. The financial struggle that teachers facing is something that we can lessen on the county level by giving us at least the option to get our pay through 12 months. Other surrounding counter counties give this option to the teachers, and I feel like it's something that we must do for our teachers here in Onslow County. Um, it'll help boost our morale. It'll boost our teacher appreciation. Since I brought it up two weeks ago today, actually, at the Superintendent's Teacher of the Year Advisory, I've gotten dozens of emails, texts, Facebook posts from people that I don't even know who they are, uh, phone calls and everything else telling me how much this would improve their financial situation and how a stable year-round monthly income helps both their families and their children. Teachers need the consistency of a county-issued 12-month pay option. It's a situation that we can fix and we must fix at the county level for the benefit of our teachers. Also, we need to foster more innovation among our students and teachers. Educational policymakers are always touting creativity and critical thinking and collaborative problem solving. And then they institute methods and rules that prevent us from doing so and deprive us of that option. More and more teachers are required to teach virtually impossible to attain goals that are always rising obtained from the results of one test taken at the end of a semester or a year. Many teachers are expected to follow the exact same rigid outline every single day, going from the bell ringer to the posted objective on the board to the instruction time to the daily practice to the exit ticket. Teachers need the freedom and the trust to attempt newer methods of invigorating the learning of their students. Teachers need to be allowed to introduce projects, games, discovery, advanced writing, debate, Socratic questioning, storytelling, role play, imagination, and of course the drill and practice that has been used for years. Teachers have a wealth of ideas on how to be creative, and we just need the empowerment to actually use those methods in our classrooms without getting them squashed by some heavy-handed supervision or inflexibility. We need to realize that on some days, it's not just the aim to produce specific learning. We need the aim to inspire our students. Another issue we really need to focus on is how to retain our teachers. We have some great teachers here in Onslow County. But our teacher turnover rate is still too high. In the last two years, there's been an average of 250 teachers each year that have left Onslow County. Puts us at about a 16% turnover rate. Now, we do have to factor in there, military deployments cannot be controlled. But that's still too many. Still too many good teachers leaving our system. And who does that hurt? The students. 
we need to find more and better ways to retain our teachers. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't have the answer for this one. But I'm sure it's some sort of a combination of time, compensation, or resources. Other states know North Carolina teachers are disgruntled. That's why they're actively trying to lure us away. You've heard the things, you've seen the ads. Heck, I've even gotten, since becoming the Teacher of the Year, a couple job offers, both out of state and within this state, trying to make me go to a bigger city. It's something we need to stop. We not only need to retain our teachers, but we need to develop more teachers here in North Carolina. We need to bring back programs like the Teaching Fellows and Teacher Cadet. Heck, between meetings, what I was just playing on the internet there, I saw an article about how the UNC system, they're down 30% in enrollment in educational classes. They're actually having to basically fire professors because they don't have enough students willing to go into education. That's a problem. So here's my question for you. What do you do to empower teachers? What can you do to empower the teachers around you? I mean, really, think about it for a second. Is there something you can do to help out a teacher around you, whether today, tomorrow, or next week? And then, what are you going to do about it? I'll be honest, I feel empowered here in Onslow County because I feel like I make a difference. I know that I have the trust and the support of those people around me. And I believe that as a teacher, I am changing the lives of my students and my colleagues. I believe that my job matters immensely. It's time for a change of perception in this state because those who can teach. Thank you. That's all for this learning curve. If you'd like to learn more about the Onslow County School System, please visit our website. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook, or you can see this show and other programs about the Onslow County School System on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and join us again on The Learning Curve.